Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to have something really special happening. Unexpected. I did not know that this was going to happen. Chanel sneaked in a little um, perfume release without announcing it. They just kind of sneaked it in. So we're going to have a perfume review and we're going to have an unboxing. Um, this is really, really special. So, but first, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob, all spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday on my main Super Dacob channel. And you're all welcome to join me over there. That's where I film the videos and then we post, post them here subsequently. So, I had no clue that uh, this perfume was released. And, and here it is. I got it today. I have already smelled it. And maybe this is a little bit of a giveaway. Obviously, uh, you, you know, clicked on this video so you know what I'm reviewing. But for my viewers who are watching live now, don't know yet. <laughs> so this is a gold, slight delicate gold little ribbon. And it says something on it, but we're going to get to it in a second. Surprise, surprise, Chanel just released Gabrielle, the pure perfume. It's the Gabrielle Extra. And not only did they just release the Gabrielle Extra, they released it as a spray, 35 milliliter. And you know when Chanel sells pure perfume in their female range, they cost a lot. And this one is no exception. But unfortunately, for some strange reason, Chanel decided to release Gabrielle um, only in this big format. Obviously, it could be even bigger. You know, Chanel has this weird tendency sometimes of releasing like one liter bottle perfume in Baccarat crystal for $30,000. <laughs> it's like, okay, Chanel, whatever, girl. But within the smaller still not affordable, but more affordable uh, range of, of pure perfumes. Chanel does um, do usually 7.5 mil, 15 mil, and for Chanel number no. five, they have a 30 milliliter splash bottle as well. And then after the 30 mil, you jump up to 225 mil, then 450 mil, 900, and then they have those special editions as well, even bigger than that from time to time. But with Gabrielle, which is, mind you, not the best seller at Chanel. Gabrielle is not the perfume that sells the most. And they've already had, they released the Eau de Parfum, they released the Eau de Parfum Essence. And you would think like, okay, well, why the pure perfume on top of that? I mean, it makes no sense, you know? And especially so many years after you've launched uh, the, 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 first, the, the first concentration, how can you... Why would you do this? This is bound to fail. And then you decide to do 35 milliliter, which is insane, insanely expensive. Like, is this thing that good? Well, I've tested it and we're going to open it together and test it together as well. Um, so this is a special moment, always for me, a ritual when I get to unbox a brand new perfume. By the way, so... <laughs> When I went to pick this one up in my Chanel Beauty Boutique, so it's kind of like on and off. It's available in some countries online on Chanel, in some it's not. But even if it's not available online in your country, your Beauty Boutique might might have it. My Beauty Boutique received two of them. They're not displayed anywhere. They just got two. They You have to ask for it. They're not promoting it in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I had no clue that this was released. I found out by accident. I literally found out by accident. They have nothing to, to accompany it. At least the beauty boutique still didn't receive anything to go with it. They said there there's something that co comes like as an extra gift with purchase, but they didn't get it. If they do get it later, they will hold one for me. And I'm like, oh, okay, so, huh, and you got only two. They're like, yeah, we, we got two. Let's see how it goes. I'm like, but you're not even promoting it. They're like, no. I'm like, what a weird thing for Chanel to do. And I was just talking about this uh, particular strategy uh, with my YouTube members and patrons 
on um, in an exclusive video saying, uh, you know, we were talking about the history of Chanel Number no. 5 and how it was kind of secretly launched before the launch. And different times back then, the Pure Perfume was launched first, but there's this mythology about when was it really launched? What was the true year in which it was launched? And mythology turns into legend and legend turns into hearsay and then at the end you never really know but similar fate might happen also to uh, Gabriel Parfum because since they're not announcing its release <laughs> at all it's just there who's to say like 10 years from now 20 years from now what are people going to think I this might already be discontinued by then but I'm just thinking are people going to remember, like, yeah, 2022 was the year that Gabriel Parfum concentration was released, even though the first Gabriel was released several years prior to that. It's such a weird timing as well, in the middle of an economical crisis, in the middle of a pandemic or post-pandemic or during a pandemic, to release something so big. Why not release this as a 7.5 mil so that it's a little bit more accessible to people? No. <laughs> Chanel defies all gravity and all logic and they opt for the biggest thing that they could kind of deliver in a pure perfume form but did they deliver well let's let's open it up and figure that one out i am going to open this from the bottom because i i preserve my my foilages you know i always preserve the foils i never take uh, away the foils and then we're going to also read together the description that Chanel has for this fragrance. By the way, the batch code is 7501. It's right there. And that's the beautiful package. I mean, it is really, really gorgeous. And then in the back, you have kind of that etched in ingredients list. The Chanel logo again, and then at the bottom we got the barcode. 7501. So, the weird thing about this fragrance is also its price. Now, let me, while I'm opening, the, and actually, you know what, first let me open this and then we're going to get to it. And Chanel is offering this as a spray, not as a splash. Usually their 30 mil bottles are, you know, splash, except for their testers. The pure perfume testers come in kind of an allure, the bottle of allure, but all the perfumes come in the allure bottle in 35 mil, but you can't buy those. Okay, so here, here we go, we go. Open it up to here. Oh my gosh, it's so... Ooh. Oh, it's gold on the inside. This box, oh my gosh, so beautiful. Okay, the gold here, it's like gold leaf style and it has little crackled details. You see how the gold is like intense gold and all like crackled? It looks like gold leaf. Wow, this is so beautiful. Listen, I live for stuff like this. This is gorgeous. Oh, it's all, look at this gold. This is real gold, you guys. Like that baroque gold, that intense, intense gold. This is so beautiful. And the sticker on Gabrielle, and I have it for comparison. I have Essence here as well. The sticker on Essence is kind of like a pale gold. This is a 50 ml bottle, but the sticker on the Parfum is that same crackled kind of like gold leaf gold, intense yellow gold. Look at that, you guys. And the, uh, interesting, the lids are also a, a more yellow gold. So the, the, the lid on the Parfum is more yellow gold than on the Essence. So they're, they're, they're telling us like, hey, there's more intensity here. 
This one is also much more darker in color. You can see how it has that ambery, golden, honey color, while the Essence, even though it's also quite intense in color, is less intense than the uh, Parfum, right? Now, and we're going to keep this to the side. What I am happy about is that they made the glass for the Parfum a little bit thicker than for the Essence. So that's a little bit safer because this juice is expensive. How much does it cost? Let me show you close up of it. So the first picture I'm going to show you is how Chanel presents it on their website. So they, they have the, the, the box and next to the box is this little teeny tiny perfume bottle. I would only change something I would take that printed parfum off the bottle. I think that that cheapens it. You know, it doesn't need to have that parfum. It, like, put it on the sticker label, you know, if you have to, but not on, the, not on the glass bottle, like not on the pure perfume. The pure perfume needs to be more elegant. But other than that, beautiful. And um, let me show you the prices. This is a little bit insane and all over the world different. Like. Um, so I've been checking Chanel all over the world <laughs> and where it's available because it's still not available everywhere online. Now, in France, it's available for as we're filming now. And I, and I wanted to blend in these photos for future reference because you know how Chanel has always price increases? Well, just so that you guys know, if you're watching this in the future, this was the original price for Gabrielle. Parfum when it was first released in July of 2022. The price in France was 298 euro for 35 mil. Super expensive, I know. But then let me show you um, in Finland. In Finland, they want more money. In Finland, Chanel wants 313 euro for the bottle. Well, that's what they want in Finland. I mean, it's a bit weird that the 313 number, it's like such a strange, oh well, that's what Chanel does. And then uh, in Great Britain, Chanel wants 250 pounds for the bottle. Now, it's not available as of now on the American website, but it is available in some beauty boutiques. If you know, you know. And... In America, it's three hundred sixteen dollars, and mm, yeah, and tax three hundred sixteen plus tax as of now. So that's kind of for you to get a little bit of an idea. Now Chanel number no. five in thirty mil, which is five milliliter less than this splash bottle, costs the same. So they are giving you five milliliter more than in a splash bottle. Woohoo! Thanks, Chanel. <laughs> wow, Chanel. Wow, thank you, Chanel. Right now, let's read. Okay, now let's read together the description. The description, as per the Chanel website, as of July 2022, the most precious sensual interpretation of Gabrielle Chanel, striking from the very first drop. Wear it directly on the skin to experience the full intensity of its floral power. The fragrance seems to hover weightlessly within its square bottle, which has been crafted from ultra-thin glass. The coffret stopper and label feature a deep shade of gold. For the first time, Chanel presents an extra bottle topped with a spray nozzle for precise application and an intensely feminine fragrance trail. And here I ask myself, why would Chanel lie about this? This is not the first time that Chanel offers an extra concentration as a spray. Because, in fact, we have Chanel number no. 5 as a spray. The extra of Chanel number no. 5 is available as a 7.5 mil spray. So let me let me zoom myself in so I can show you this better. So this is the Chanel number no. five extrait or parfum, almost empty, but I have a refill already waiting for me. So it already 
Chanel has already done pure perfume or extra um, in spray form. So why would they lie about this? Very bizarre. Composition. The parfum, often called an extra, is the quintessence of Chanel uh, parf parfumeur craftsmanship. Gabriel Chanel Extrait is an intense, multifaceted floral composition in which jasmine, ylang ylang, orange blossom, and grass tuberose unfurl one by one. Considered to be the most captivating flower of all, grass tuberose is obtained using a unique extraction technique, a process that makes it possible to capture the freshness of its petals. Its floral heart is enveloped by the comfort of sandalwood and vanilla absolute, forming a particularly sensual composition. For Olivier Polge, Chanel in-house perfumer creator, Gabriel Chanel Extrait is a floral jewel. The most precious version of Gabriel Chanel, which, like the woman who wears it, leaves no one indifferent. Now we're going to read the inspiration. All of this is from the Chanel website, and I want to read this for posterity. So in case they change anything in the future, we have the original text that they first used. Okay, I'm getting ready for this, you guys. Oh my God. And, and, okay. All right. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, it's intense. It has, you know, Gabrielle has peach in the top notes. Now, this thing is so unannounced that even major... Uh, fragrance databases uh, that, you know, describe oh my gosh. perfumes and, and the details and all of the information about, uh, you know, notes. Some of them don't even carry this perfume in their database yet. So you can't just easily find all the notes. You can only go from what you read from the Chanel website. Now, the inspiration behind Gabrielle they quote Coco, I said, I decided who I wanted to be, and that is who I am, Gabrielle Chanel. Before it was the name of a fragrance, Gabrielle was the name of a woman, Coco Chanel, a woman who made history by changing the rules. Gabrielle Chanel is the fragrance of a free, passionate woman who speaks her mind and chooses her own destiny. A little bit too much, you know what I mean? It's a little bit cringe, but Chanel is all about that storytelling, which, yeah. Art of Perfuming. The Gabrielle Chanel Parfum bottle was designed with a spray nozzle for intensely feminine, pre feminine there we go, precise fragrance application that targets the pulse points, the area behind the ears, the décolleté, and the inside of the wrists. And in fact, we sprayed it here on the inside of the wrist. Okay. It is a... <laughs> It's a spicy tuberose. It's literally <laughs> like this, the interior of this box. It's, it's pure gold. It reflects light like nothing else. Listen, I was not that happy with, and I buy them as they come out. When Gabrielle first came out, I bought it the first day, the first day it came out. I still have my 100 ml bottle. I didn't use much of it, the first version of it. Dior de Parfum. And I found it a little bit too screechy metallic. And I said, you know, ultimately, it's an interesting white floral, but not really very Chanel. Then a couple of years later, Essence comes out. And I thought, oh, this is more intense. But for me, the first edition, when it came out, it warranted a 50 mil. I didn't buy the biggest bottle. I bought the 50 mil. And as you can see, I used very little of it. But I have warmed up to it. It's captivating me more and more, but still I felt this is a really kind of interesting white floral, but not Chanel. This one, and by the way, it smells more and more of Chanel to me as time passes, which is so bizarre, but this one is insane. <laughs> I mean, we're going to have to wait a little bit till it dissipates, but this one is Chanel. And it is Chanel because... It's kind of what these other two couldn't really be. 
it, it's like okay let's let's analyze this from a different perspective as i said at the beginning of this video why would somebody like um Olivier Poge or, or Chanel, why would anybody decide after so many years of having released the first Gabrielle to release the Pure Perfume now and in such a big size for, for, for such a big amount of money? Why? Unless you didn't have a point to prove, like something just to say, you know, yeah, okay, it's not going to sell. I, I have a feeling that maybe Olivier Poge was kind of hurt a little bit by the fact that Gabrielle was not the best seller that maybe uh, listen everything I say in this video is just my opinion only just for entertainment purposes only you know every, not rooted in facts or reality it's, everything's alleged right but from my un understanding of how I envision Olivier he might have been a little bit hurt by the fact that Gabriel was not that huge success that maybe he was hoping it would be because that was his first mass release, not niche, not Les Exclusives, not Les Zoo. It was his first mass released Chanel perfume, not a flanker, because he already, you know, he claims Ovive, even though his dad was still there when Ovive was in development. So they say Olivier Poge did Ovive, but. Um, his dad has something to do with it. But anyway, Gabriel is his first, his perfume at Chanel. And it didn't really do, you know, like, oh, wow, Gabriel, you know. And I feel like he might have pushed for this just to kind of say, but this is what I wanted. I couldn't get it because for a mass release perfume, you can't get this. Even though I think you could. But anyway, you know, a lot of this is poetry a lot of this is well the high price because it is a feminine fragrance and this and that and they want to make you dream the dream but it is different than the other two concentrations and the fact that it's released in such small numbers and that they didn't even talk about it <laughs> no promoting nobody knew about it all of a sudden it's just there and it's in such a huge size for a pure perfume it's like almost like saying i don't even care if you buy it i know that my gabrielle was a it wasn't a flop in terms of general money, but in terms of what Chanel is capable of, Gabrielle was a flop. Ish. And then uh, years after, to say, you know what, I'm going to bring out the pure perfume anyway. So you get to smell, you know, the little engine that could. It's intense. It's milky. Um, it's a resinacy flower. Like, it's a white floral that has volume to it. And it's not resin cloying, but it's more like it fills you up when you inhale it. And it's it, the tuberose is so soapy. It's that classic soapy tuberose that almost hints at something that could be a bubblegummy tuberose like we know from Fraca. But it's not. It's a Chanel tuberose. And it's a Chanel Jasmine. And um, and it's a Chanel Ylang Ylang. And the Ylang Ylang in this thing, it's the buttery aspect of it. It's this kind of... Oh my God, this thing, you guys. It kind of almost moves me to tear. Can you believe? I'm almost tearing up now. What is wrong with me? There's something about this one. It hits the spot. Tuberose has this effect on me in general, so bear with me. But they've taken off that metallic, dusty smell that Gabrielle had. And, and this thing, it's like... Um, Oh my God, it, it's almost as if it's kind of the story of Chanel herself, you know, and bear with me, Gabrielle, when she was young, before she was the, you know, Mademoiselle Coco Chanel, she had dreams and hopes, but you know, an orphan, poverty, raised in an orphanage, and, you know, she landed on 
the socialite Tehran and you know, was a mistress to, to men with power and influence and a lot of people took her for granted. A lot of people were like, oh, okay, yeah, go, go, whatever, you know. And um, and it's kind of like the first release of Gabrielle. It, it, it wasn't really there of the, of the perfume. It was like, yeah, okay, nothing groundbreaking. And then, but it's almost as if she was hinting at us. Yeah, you're underestimating me now. I'm just at the beginning. So you just wait and see. And then the Essence came out a couple of years later, and the Essence was a little bit more, you know, a little bit more succinct, but still not quite there. And again, people were like, eh, you know, and then comparing this to Coco's life, it's like, well, now by now, she's already, you know, starting with her hat production, her millinery uh, manufacturing, she's starting to work with jerseys. But still, some people are really infatuated by her, but still a lot of people are like, eh, Still, it doesn't give me the zhuzh. Then a couple of years after that, she moves to Paris. 31 Rue Cambon. Well, actually, at the beginning it was like 21, 22 Rue Cambon. But then she, you know, moved it. But the whole street is basically hers almost. But, and that's when she shows us her full potential. It's almost as if somebody mastermindedly planned out this tactful, release of the concentrations leading up to this and this is why i say this parfum print underneath the label we didn't need it because to me this is gabrielle it was like all those other concentrations were leading up to this and now we have it it's like it was bubbling bubbling up sizzling sizzling getting there getting there and now it's finally there it's finally there. I'm not saying that this is a groundbreaking perfume, because it's not. I'm not saying that this thing is light years different from the other two, because it's not. But, you know, it's about the balance. And this one... It punches you. It, 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 it almost... And this is why it moves me to tears, because it's almost like she's slapping you, saying, I told you so! Why don't you ever listen to me? You know, she's um, stubborn and proud, but she knew what she was doing. And she delivered, and finally she got her moment to shine. And this to me is like, well, this is the story of Gabrielle. Finally, I understand, like, all the connections, all the dots, all, everything leading up to this. And probably they were not that poetic in the Chanel team. I don't think that they thought that far. So you're welcome, Chanel, if you're watching for this story. But to me, it feels that way. And bottom line, that's all that matters because as Coco Chanel also always said, you know, she would reinvent her past just because she couldn't deal with being an orphan, being abandoned by her father, being raised in an orphanage. And well, she would say, you know, in interviews, well, so sometimes I lose myself in the labyrinth of my own myth. And the beauty that she leaves behind is that we also get to reinvent stories connected to her through the beauty and elegance of her creations, her clothes, her perfumes, the ones that, that were released during her lifetime. This is a beautiful rendition of what she was right in that moment. You know, it smells of the moment when Gabrielle became Coco Chanel. So the first Gabrielle Eau de Parfum is the beginning. The essence is moving, you know, to Biarritz, Deauville, and kind of starting to plan Paris. And this is when Gabrielle arrives to Paris and is just about to turn into Coco Chanel. And that's the smell. Oh my God, it gives me goosebumps. It, I feel it. it it's her letting go of the past and empowering herself and stepping into Roucambon and being the goddess of fashion that she was. So beautifully, like it's right in between. It's like that clock, like tick tock. Like, what's it going? Where's it going to land? Where's it going to land? Where's it going to land? And then a bong right in the middle. And uh, 
Ugh, goosebumps. Seriously. Um, and I think the dosage is just with the ylang ylang, you guys. You can't see on camera. All my hairs are like standing like this. <laughs> it smells of, of the 20s, but it also smells modern. S oh. Everything that was not just right, not just ripe enough in the other two concentrations is just right here. Everything fell into place, finally. It all falls into place. This is a Chanel perfume. And just like in true Chanel fashion, she just left it there for us, unannounced, without any advertisement, almost like a whisper, like a secret, like just to let you guys know. For who wants to discover, discovers. And I'm telling you, in my beauty boutique, they had two bottles. Nobody knew about it. Nobody wanted it. Nobody asked for it. <laughs> the tester is not even out. And they were a little bit surprised that I wanted one. They're like, oh, Jacob, you really, you, you like? Okay, okay. <laughs> they were happy, of course, you know, to make a sale. And I was surprised that I fell in love with this so much. Um, and... It, it feels like flowers, white flowers, right? We have the jasmine, the tuberose, um, the ilang ilang. They have ripened to the maximum. And after that begins the decay. So when you smell the pure perfume of Gabrielle, you smell that fullness, that ripeness. There's peach in there as well. It's a boozy peach. And by boozy, I don't mean like brandy or cognac. I mean more of a, um, it's more of a, of a clear type of alcohol, you know, more of like a vodka type of alcohol. So it doesn't have that, flavor of a cognac or a brandy but it is a, a a boozy peach that is you know almost fermenting it's almost at the verge of fermentation but it is one of those fluffy furry european peaches not a nectarine it's a peach and it's just ripe for the picking and the ylang ylang adds that butter all over this concoction and the ylang ylang is all, it, the butter, is, it's just almost ambrosial. Not quite. It, it's still sober and it's a Chanel perfume after all. There's still that cold heart in there. <laughs> There's a cold heart in here as well, but the florals, I mean, this tuberose, you guys, oh my gosh. <sighs> I get goosebumps every time I smell it. I don't know what it is, but it's like a... It's insane. I get confused smelling it because, you know, and I've smelled perfumes in my life, but this thing just shoots me in different directions at the same time. Like I, you know, when you get flashbacks, like in movies, when, when you have these really this really quick succession of pictures just like going like tuck, 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 after each other and you have visions of the past where you've been to what you've done well when i smell this i get like 90s 80s 70s 60s 50s 40s 30s 20s i get like from every decade i have visions lights moving pictures art pieces um blurry visions strong colors intense colors silence sadness death, birth, life. It's like you inhale it and it's like it's everything. And But it's also simple. <laughs> it's a funny thing about it. Like, you know, the quality of a tuberose with aldehydes, you can have that soapiness there that can also smell of detergent, that can also smell of mm, 
more or less good quality hair product, uh, beauty salon, you know, it, it has that cheapness in there as well. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I have that cheapness in, I know where I come from. I don't come from money, but I'm delivering class, baby. And that's, and that there's that duality in here. So you're smelling that surface that kind of, it knows where it comes from. You know, it might lie about where it comes from, but you smell the truth. And then what this concoction manages to do out of itself, it gathers itself. It's like, yeah, okay, this is my past. That's where I come from. But I'll tie it up in a lovely bow and I'm going to carry myself as pure form and elegance. And so you have these two things. It's a duality that keeps like, constantly ticking right until it kind of from time to time just hits in right in the middle as i was saying before it stays close to the skin oh my god goosebumps like every time i inhale this is insane my, oh, my legs are like <laughs> what the hell it's wonderful and um i get it and it's actually even more beautiful to think that they didn't even announce it, the release of this one, that some boutiques got it, some didn't. But it is worth every penny. I know it's a ripoff, but these emotions to me, when a perfume evokes such emotions in me, I'm like, take my money. It's like a drug. You feel alive smelling this. It's insane. It, it literally is this kind of... Look, even the packaging, how, you know, when you buy it, you're like, okay, it's this pale gold. You don't really expect that once you open it, inside is this intensity, you know? And they did this on purpose. <laughs> like the truth is inside. It's hiding inside this whole time. You had this kind of bland vision, which is kind of, you know, the the first concentration of the Eau de Parfum. Then it got a little more intense with the Essence, but now... And it has something so 80s in, in, it, in, it, in itself. There's something... Oh my gosh, this is 80s in a bottle, but like... In the most beautiful, nostalgic way. But then again, you might sniff out the 70s as well. As I said, every decade, he just kind of flashes everything. Oh, it's so beautiful. It, it, it breaks my heart how beautiful it is. It's just like you feel... It's such a pity that they use all of these you know, starlets to advertise this fragrance. Like the pure perfume is a Farrah Fawcett type. The blonde, wavy hair, you know, with all the hairspray, you know, the beautiful wavy hair, backlit hair with that golden shine kind of filtering through her hair. And she has that beautiful, reassuring, comforting, almost motherly smile, but sensual with the dreamy soft lights that we know from the late 70s and 80s. That kind of skin tone lipstick, delicate, but then we got more, you know, blush on the cheeks and the beautiful makeup that they used to do in the 80s, a little bit more intense. Slight sheen around the eyes and warmth and everything imbued in this honey light. It's like the end of summer, beginning of fall. And that's um, the, the the photography I envision for, for this perfume. I, I would I would um, photograph it like that, and I would then put Farrah Fawcett in several decades. The first one being the '80s, for some reason. Of course, I would style Farrah Fawcett also for the '20s. I would style her for the '30s, '40s, '50s. I would do every decade up until today. And, and she would, I know Farrah Fawcett is unfortunately no longer with us, but I envision a, a person like her to promote this fragrance. And it would be for every decade, the same perfume. 
like has arrived this perfume but for every decade every styles change fashions change but style is forever which coco chanel says i mean she also said le style c'est moi which means like i am style <laughs> she had a little bit of a moment there but she does say bottom line you know fashions come and go but style stays and you have all these fashions changing from decade to decade and yet farrah fawcett is always herself true to herself and this bottle is always next to her identical to itself that's how you know that style remains and i would do everything in my power to promote this perfume as something that transcends time because ultimately this is what you need to do if you want a perfume today to really make it 20 30 40 years from now and still be remembered i mean if humanity is even here 30 years from now but Golden hour in a bottle, um, says Black Noise in, in the live chats. RN says, Chanel perfumes are magic. Um, so, uh, Debbie, uh, Olivier Polge, uh, Debbie's asking, what did Olivier allegedly do? I mean, you mean in terms of Chanel perfumes? Well, first of all, Olivier is also a master, just like Dominique Ropion. Dominique Ropion and uh, Olivier are... Dominique even more so. They they know their white florals. Interesting that Dominique Ropion and Olivier Poge together worked on Pure Poison, the 2004 release of Pure Poison by Christian Dion, which has now been reformulated. It's really a sh sad shadow of its former self. But the original formulation of Pure Poison, a masterpiece of a white floral. Dominique Ropion, of course, as we know, is uh, the genius behind carnal flower from the Frederick Mal editions, another white floral master, a, a tuberose masterpiece. But Olivier, he delivered with this one. He really, really did. This thing is a uh, It's expensive and it also smells cheap. It's so beautiful, you guys. I love it. It, it teases you. It, it It's literally like, you know, I've read so many books on Coco Chanel. I've read even her kind of The Allure of Chanel with Paul Morand, semi-autobiography because it was published posthumously. That's why I say semi, because she did not fully approve it. But it is deemed the Chanel autobiography in a way, even though Paul Morand published it after her death. But through her words and also through those rare television interviews that she delivered, she had such a wit about her, that deep husky voice and but flirty. She was flirtatious till the till, till her last day. And no matter how elegant and gracious and poised and beautiful, you know, Coco Chanel, nobody wore Chanel like Coco did. She was her best model. In fact, the best Chanel number no. five advertisement was the one that she did in the 30s where she modeled herself for her own perfume and this perfume has that wit about it. it it kind of it tells you a joke because it makes you laugh it doesn't take itself seriously but then all of a sudden it kind of stabs you as well with emotion and it makes you cry because it's like oh my god there's depth but then there's also surface and it keeps balancing the the two It is her. It really, really smells of how I envision her. And that's why it kind of makes me emotional because it's beautiful. It's like y you smell this and you, with one inhaling of it as it develops on your skin, it's like with one inhale, it's like reading an entire book of 400 plus pages. That would take you, it depends how quickly you read, but it could take you, you know, a week or two or a month. To read and you get all that with just one time inhaling this and um, Olivier you delivered you really delivered I mean this is hmm. goosebumps 
I don't know what to say. I really hope that this perfume does not get discontinued soon because it's pricey. They're selling it in only these bigger formats. And I don't know how many people are going to be like, oh, hell yeah. You know, because you know how people are. They're like, oh, it's just marketing. It's just strategies. I'm like, yeah, I yes, sure. This thing could cost less for sure. <laughs> Duh. And, but people are going to think, well, why should I spend so much money when I can buy the Essence or the Eau de Parfum? Yeah, that's a way you could see it. You could see it that way, but it's not the same. Actually, if you really want to have the journey, you need all three. And, you know, it's like with TV shows. When you first watch Twin Peaks, one of my favorite shows, and let's say you watched it in the 90s when it first came out, and you watch season one, and then you watch season two, and that cliffhanger at the end of season two is one of the most intense cliffhangers in television history. And then nothing. The show gets discontinued. We're left with a cliffhanger and with hope that maybe one day Twin Peaks would return. And who watched Twin Peaks in the 90s had to wait 25 years until David Lynch and Mark Frost brought back Twin Peaks for season three. That flavor of time, because time has a flavor, it has a smell, is, is a part of the joy of devouring season three of Twin Peaks. But you can only taste it if you've waited 25 years for season three. For the people who discover Twin Peaks now and binge watch all three seasons, plus, plus Fire Walk With Me, the movie, plus The Missing Pieces, in two weeks, yeah, you get the full Twin Peaks experience, but you don't get the flavor of time. Time is the factor. It's, it's the most important ingredient to taste Twin Peaks properly. Same applies to this. So, yeah, you could just say, well, you know, I could just buy now the Eau de Parfum de Essence and the Parfum and, okay, yeah, sniff, sniff, sniff. Okay, got it. Thank you. It's been years in the making. Years. It's been years since, what, what was it, like 2015, 16, 17, that uh, Gabrielle Eau de Parfum was released, and two years later, the Essence. So you had two years to get used to the Eau de Parfum, or one year. And then the Essence comes out. And then three, four years later, the Parfum comes out. So it's been like season one of Gabrielle. Then you wait several years for season two. And then you wait three years for season three, the final season. It's that flavor. People who love Stranger Things. You know, it's a very popular show at the moment. People who just discovered now on Netflix, you just binge watch all four seasons that are available as of now. And you're good to go in a couple of days. But who started watching Stranger Things several years back and had to wait a year or two for season two and then another two or three years for season three and then the pandemic hit and then you're waiting like three years for season four. There's that time passing in between that adds flavor, adds an aroma, it adds a smell to the pleasure of enjoying something. And so there's so much pleasure in enjoying Gabriel Parfum because also of the time that lapsed between uh, the, the, the different concentration releases. It stays beautifully close to the skin, like all Chanel extraits. The pure perfumes are very elegant compositions. Chanel's pure perfumes stay always close to the skin. They lure you in just the right amount and you, if it catches you, if you come close enough, you can't let go. And this one doesn't let you, it doesn't let you go. It's witty, it's intelligent, it's sharp, 
like a knife, but it's also soft and tender. Every characteristic that is Gabriel Bonheur or Coco Chanel. Every characteristic, the highlights of her characteristics are all in here. There's a sharpness to it. There's a wit to it. There's a delicate softness. To it. There's even almost a hint of a motherly touch in there as well. This is so beautiful. I I know it's expensive, so I'm not saying, oh, go buy it. But it, at least, please go to, to, go to a Chanel beauty boutique and ask if they have a tester. They don't have samples of these. They're not going to give you out freebies with this thing. This is like, you want it, you have to buy it, done. But they, they, they're, they're probably going to have a tester. Spray it. Spray it here or on your chest. And don't judge it immediately. Let it, because this is very complex. So let this thing develop. Let it become more and more delicate as time passes and more and more sophisticated and deep as time passes. At least smell it so that you get to experience this wonderful thing before they like take it away from the market. Because I don't know if this is an experiment, if they didn't announce it because they just want to see like how it goes. You know, releasing something like this in this economy is like really crazy, especially for a perfume that's not that successful, is insane. But I'm glad that they took the risk. If this is an experiment, please, Chanel, let me know because then I have to stock up. <laughs> I know this is expensive, but I like I can't live with just one bottle. I cannot live with just one bottle of this. This thing is just too good. And the memories it brings out are just too good. And the smell of time passing, the flavor of time ticking inside this bottle is too good. And yet it's simple. And it's um, there's a cheapness to it as well. Oh, it's so effervescent, you guys. The aldehydes are amazing here. It tickles you. It slaps you. And then it goes away. And then it's like, ha oh, ha wasn't that funny, darling? That joke I made at your expense. There's all of that. It's like, okay, now, now let's work. Now, now let's get down to business. Oh, now let's go to the opera. Now let's, you know, now let's go sleep. Now let's have an intimate moment. It. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Olivier Polge. I love what you did with Le Lion de Chanel. But this is the first pure perfume that you're doing. I know you did Coromandel, and I actually have uh, Coromandel, uh, no, the pure perfume, which I like, but you delivered something with this that is a testament to what you're capable of. And I do hope that Chanel lets you do more of this because this seems like they let you do it because you were begging for it. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, okay, but like low key, low key, eh? I hope they let you do more of this because this, um, this is magical. You guys, thank you so much for uh, listening in the chats and also you guys who are watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Um... It's rare that a perfume humbles you so much like this thing does. It's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Thank you, Olivier. And thank you, Chanel. Well, I bought this. This was not sponsored. But thank you for the vision. You know, thanks for the vision because it's very inspiring. And um, never forget to never give up on love. And until next time, subscribe. <laughs>